Hello Oracle Database users, this is Justin and in this Oracle Database video tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a user who is identified externally to an Oracle Database. Now, what does that mean, identified externally? Well, what it means is that we're going to use, we're going to tell Oracle to use something other than the data dictionary to authenticate a user. And what does it mean to authenticate a user? Well, it means that when you launch SQL Plus or SQL Developer or a, another sort of Oracle server client authentication which requires you to log in, that you're basically asking a database permission to log in and interact with its objects, the data. And the Oracle needs to ensure that you are a valid user and you have valid permissions to do so. And the Oracle database knows about the most basic authentication method that we have is data dictionary authentication. And that basically means that the data dictionary, which is metadata about data, okay, database data described in database data, and it's kept in the system and since 10, version 10G in the sysox table space, okay, some of it, that data dictionary authentication means that when a user submits his username and password via SQL Plus, the database will check that against the data dictionary to make sure that you are a valid user defined to the database and ensure that your password is indeed correct. Okay, because the data dictionary has a list of defined users and has a list of passwords for each user in encrypted format. Okay, so this is the most basic type of authentication. But sometimes not always possible to use data dictionary authentication or sometimes it's not feasible ie corporate policies ease of use there, there, there's a lot of reasons why this is now this video by no means talks about all different all the different authentication methods there are to to log in into an oracle database it just discusses this one authentication method okay this is external os authentication that's that's all this video talks about uh, there's another authentication method that is um, worth noting, and that is the password file authentication. And there's, I actually do have a video out there detailing how to set up the password file authentication, and talk, and I talk and explain that. But this video talks about how to create a user who is identified externally, which basically means that something outside of Oracle handles the authentication. Not the only way to do it, just one of the ways. And you're going to see a neat little automation trick that you get by doing this. So, here we go. First, set the Oracle SID to finance. And let's ensure that our Oracle SID is set properly, which it is, finance. And we connect to the Oracle database as the sys user. Show user. We're connected as sys. So we're the sysdba. And we type in select name from the dollar sign database and we see we're connected to the correct database finance so let's go ahead and enter the following command in DOS by the way the command would be ID on Unix or Linux based systems type in echo space percent username percent now the two commands I typed in, I, I displayed the value of the username variable, which is a system variable, which is set for everyone who logs into a Windows box, and saw that the value was jblystein1. I did a host name and saw that I, I'm connected to system host1. So this tells us that we're on a computer no, name named host1, and we're logged in as user jblystein1. Now, why is this significant? Well, we'll talk, you'll see in a second. Let's go ahead and let's create a user that's the same name as the user that we are logged on to our computer with. And this is a window defined in this is a user defined in Windows. Okay, so let's create a user in Oracle. Create user J Blystein1 identified by Justin123. So we did basically what you do when you create a user. We said create user. We gave the username jblystein1, and we said identified by the password, justin123. So this is a user account, 
jblyson one and Oracle that has the password jjustin123. Now, we have to grant this user the system privilege that all users require in order to establish a session against an Oracle database, and that's to create session system privilege. And we, we type then to grant that privilege, we say grant create session to jblystein1. Grant create session to jblystein1. Now we launch SQL Plus, we type in jblystein1, and we type in the correct password, justin123, show user, and we see we're connected to jblystein1. You're saying, big deal. It's a big deal. All right. Let me, sh let, me, let me show you a trick. Create a user called this. Create user, double quotes, ops dollar host one backslash J Leistein one identified. Here comes another trick. Externally. Well, not a trick user created. Now grant create session to ops dollar host one backslash j lifestyle one. User created grant succeeded. What the heck is this? This is ugly looking name. Well, this is a special name here. Okay, ops dollar is a special string which we'll talk about in a second. Host1 slash is a Windows requirement. When you do this in a Unix or Linux environment, you don't need the host name slash. That, that, that's just a Windows networking requirement. And jblystein1 is also an important string. And we'll talk about this in a second. And identified externally, notice how he didn't say identified by and then some, and then some password. Okay? Externally is not the password. You're not going to SQL plus, type in this username and type in externally. First of all, what would be the point? And second of all, that's not externally is not the password. It's a special keyword which tells the user, hey, don't I don't authenticate via the data dictionary. That's what it's saying. And we're saying grant create session to this user. Okay. Type in the following. SQL plus slash. Whoa, did you see that? You type in SQL slash, use the slash here, and you didn't have to provide the Oracle database a password. It logged you right in. I know what people are probably thinking. Oh, security breach, security breach. No, not at all. I'll tell you why. And by the way, you're also probably thinking, well, you log into the database all the time with this string, SysDBA. Yeah, I do, but that's a little misleading because... Um, you're not always going to have this privilege. I'm, I happen to be, I happen to be, I happen to have my Windows box set up because I'm, because uh, I'm, I'm instructing these videos, um, where I have DBA privilege. I have the ability to log in, and I explain that in another, in a, in a SysDBA video where I talk about the SysDBA privilege. And I explain that, and where when I talk about the password file too in that video. Okay, so you're not always going to be able to do this, but. Even if even if your OS user wasn't a SysDBA, as long as it was set up the way that we set it up, you will be able to log in with SQL plus slash and not provide a password. Now, the only reason why you are able to do this is because you are logged into the operating system to Windows as J Blystein One. Okay, so this is a this is this is a Windows account kept in the Windows user database or the Windows registry entry or whatever Windows inter internally keeps um, user IDs to find to it. Okay? So when you create when you set up external authentication, what you are basically saying is that let the user log on to the database without a password if it's the same user that they're connecting to the Oracle database as. And the Identified externally says trust that they've already been authenticated by the operating system. That's why it says that's why it's called external authentication because the authentication has been delegated from the from the Oracle data dictionary and is being done 
via the operating system. Okay, so it's not that like it's not like Oracle's talking to the operating system and, and doing some sort of authentication. Oracle assumes that the operating system has authenticated you, which is a pretty safe assumption in most cases, by the way. Okay. So, um, DBA. So we didn't log in as this user. We logged in as this user. Okay. Host one slash J Blystein one. Okay, so by, by using this special prefix here, we're basically saying anything that follows this, if that username is the user that's also issuing the SQL plus command, log them in without a password. This is a nice feature for, I've seen this used um, out, out in the world with, um, in, multi, in a lot of places I've, I've seen this used, in backup scripts, especially on Unix systems, as a automated way to log into for the script to log into the database in an automated fashion, like in the middle of the night or whenever the database backups run. Okay, nice, nice. Now I don't recommend that all the time. There are other ways to do that, but that I've seen that I've seen it used in that matter. Okay, now can you show parameter OS? There is a special. There is a parameter called OS authent prefix string ops. Now that's set to the default and the reason why and that's the default ops dollar. The reason why it's set to ops dollar is for back I don't know the total reasons why but that I'm sure you can find an answer on MetaLink or out, out on the web somewhere if you're interested but ops dollar is there for um, backward compatibility reasons but basically that's saying any user if the user is named Jay Blystein and I'm logged in as Jay Blystein so what? Use data, use data dictionary authentication. It doesn't matter. But if the user happens to have an ops dollar in front of it, whatever comes after that ops dollar, if that's what they're logged into the data to the system as, let them in just with a slash. They don't need a password. Let them right in. So we could also. So we can also, if you wanted to change, you could also change this from ops dollar to be null. And you don't need the ops dollar. All you need is the um, all you need is to create a user with host one slash jblystein one, and it will work. Now, reminder again: the host one slash is just for uh, is a Windows specific thing. It's a Windows networking thing. You don't have to do that on Unix or Linux based systems. Okay, so that's just an, a neat little trick. SQL plus slash, and you log right into the Oracle database. But as that user and L privileges that user has been granted. And of course, if we do a drop user, double quotes, double quotes because remember we're using the dollar sign here. Ops. That's just the Oracle object name and rules. Dollar host one slash J Blaystein one. Oops. And we try to do SQL plus slash. It's not going to let us in. And as you can tell, if you remember, the user jblystein1 is not the same thing. It's, even though we're logged into the system with the operating system user jblystein1, logging in as jblystein1 is not the same thing. It's still going to ask you for a password. Okay? It's only a special thing if you have this user. And if you logged into the Windows system as user John or Bob or Beth or something, and you did an SQL plus slash, it wouldn't work. You'd get you get this error unless Beth John or whatever has an ops dollar user that that someone created in the database the way that we just did. Okay, that's how you create a user that's identified externally.